Hey guys, welcome back. Terry from Smooth Watch up here, and uh, you join me for part two of the KK Moon XR2206 High Precision Functional Function Signal Generator DIY Kit. Um, so in part one, we covered what's in the kit. It's quite a simple little kit. Only thing I've done off camera is um, I've I've just these machine screws, uh, the long ones, uh, just self-tap into the base. Obviously, I haven't taken the, the, the paper off yet, which I'll do next, but I just um, self-tapped them in um, just to make life a bit easier later on. So I've done that, put that out of the way, and I have done a little bit of research on this. Now, there's three potentiometers. Uh, these are the potentiometers. Uh, they're 50k, and they go into the board, three of them, Let's see if I can get the clip in just now, right, so there's three of them going along the bottom there, now, the one on the right is course adjustment, um, that one is fine adjustment, now from what I've read about this, uh, the actual amplitude, which is the voltage, um, and how big the peaks are, if you turn it to the right, it decreases, and if you turn it to the left, it increases, which means we're going to have to do a little mod on this because, generally speaking, uh, left is a lower amount and right is a higher amount. So, um, looking at the tracks, the centre pin um, is, a, is a sweep or the brush, so that doesn't change uh, position. Um, and it appears that one leg is going to ground or is not used. It's either on the, it's, I think it's actually just not connected to anything. And the other leg is connected via a series of resistors up um, into the chip. So what we need to do is transpose the two legs. So I'll show you the wee mod of that so that mine's actually goes from minimum to max, rather from max to minimum, which is counterintuitive. So here's, here's a little uh, variable pot. <coughs> so I'll just stick this onto our resistance. So here we go. So if we screw it all the way to the right, it's showing 1.8 ohms, 1 1.9 ohms. And if we screw it all the way to the left, it should be sitting nearly 50, 50 kilo ohms. And it's 46.4. So all the way to the left gives maximum resistance, which apparently sets it on its minimum or its maximum and going all the way to the right um, sets the amplitude to the minimum. So I need to reverse um, these two pins and I'll do that with wire so I'll show you that a bit later on. So I'll just unhook that. So um, there are five resistors that will go into the board. Um, three of them are the same. So let's see, resistors are, where are we, R4 is a 330 ohm, uh, 3, 5 and 6 are 5.1k, so it's safe to assume that the three together are 5.1k. Let's just check that, I'll just uh, clip on, on there, and <laughs> where's the other one? So these should be f f roughly 5.1k. Now you can read them off the resistor bands, but I find um, what we're getting 500, yeah, 500k, 5.1k. So that one's slightly under. I wonder how accurate these are. It's hard to tell the colours on these ones um, to read it all, all the colour bands off. So I cheat. I just check it. Got another wee tool I can check it with, but uh, there we go. That's that's lower again. So the, you've got a wee tolerance here with these, um, and it's usually five to ten percent. But as you can see with the blue ones, it's quite hard to read. Um, so it looks like red, red, black, red, and you can read them off um, your resistor chart there. And it does that doesn't even look like red. It should be puts yeah. It's aye. The colours don't make sense on this, so I just check them. Um, so that's our 
5.3k. Um, so we should have a 330 ohm as well. Let's have a look. What's this one? I'll just clip this on. So that this is a cheats way of of checking them. If you, the blue resistors, the the metal film resistors, it can be quite hard to read. Um, so what's this one? Right, that looks like 1K. There is a 1K one. Um, R1 is 1K. So that's near enough 1K. So that's our R1. So I'll put that off to the left. That's a 1K, which means this one, it should be 330 ohms. So let's just clip this one on. So it should be about 330 ohms. So that's our 330. So that's fine. So that's them identified. Now, the little um, ceramic uh, capacitors are different. Um, I'll just see if I can pull one up close enough for you to see. But they have numbers on them. Have I got that the wrong way around? So this has got a 104. Now, I've got a chart that tells me what the different ones are. Uh, have I got capacitance on here? I should have. Uh, dee, 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 where's my capacitance? Milliamps, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's on there. It's still on there. What's that? That's diode. I'm still getting used to this meter. So, I will... Let's see, we're on nanofarads now, so we're on capacitance. So, I will clip these together. And just rail that out. So it should zero it. Should zero it. Right. So just for a bit of fun. Now these aren't polarity sensitive, these capacitors. What's a 104? That's saying 106 nanofarads, right? So it's supposed to be 104 nanofarads, but it's 106 nanofarads. So, yeah, um, these are, are all different values, so you have to make sure they're in the right place because that's what sets up the frequencies. So apart from that, I don't think I need the multimeter for anything else. Um, so I shall pop that off to the side of the bench. And he's got everything tangled up. Yay! as is the norm. So right, we're going to build this thing. It shouldn't be too hard to do. So let's get my lead former and everything out there. Uh, that's a 1K, that's a 330. So the first thing we're going to stick in is um, the resistors because that's the lowest profile item on the board. So R1 is the 1K. So let's just have a little look. Where is R1? R1's up here. Now this is just a little lead bending tool that makes life easy for me. And it's going to have to be on the, the thinner side. Okay. Now you can bend them with your fingers. Um, I find it a lot easier just to stick them in here to bend them. Let's see if we can bend that one down. Nah, I'm going to have to do it because this one's so tight. Um, they've really got it quite finely, basically on the minimum that you can get on the resistors. So that goes in there, that's R1. Excuse me, my nose is running, so I've still got the man flu. Um, and then the 330K is R4, which sits right next to it. So let's get the 330K. And I think I shall just bend the leads manually. Um, just to get it through the hole. So let's get that one in. For some reason it's longer on one side than it is on the other. It will go in. Right, so that's those two. And then there's three other resistors which again are on a really strange pitch. So that's these ones. And these three are 
what was it, 5.5k? R, R3, R5 and R6, 5.1k. So let's just snip them away from the machine tape. And I'll just bend them by hand. I do prefer doing them in the gauge, but yeah, they're so close together that we're having to do it by hand. So they haven't allowed enough length really to use a lead forming tool. So there's the next one. And the next one. Let's move these off to the side. So that's basically in the three other resistor positions. Now whilst I'm going to stick them in, I'm just going to pull down my soldering bolt. Let's see if we can get that sitting there. I'll get that up to temperature while we're sitting talking so I don't waste any time waiting on that heating up. Right, have we got the camera in a central-ish position? We have. Um, I shall stick that down there beside there. That's my little uh, tip cleaning device. Right, so we're looking for uh, R6. There's that one. So should we, we shall pop the resistor through there. That's that one. And where's the other ones? Oh, they're on the side. R5 and R3 are next to each other here. There's one. Have I got all the bands going the same colour, same way, so that the electrons don't fall out? <laughs> so, easiest way to do these, because they're all the same way, is I'm just going to quickly flip it onto the bench, like so. And once my um, bolt is up to temperature, I shall do a one leg on each. So I'm just going to pull the camera in a little bit so you can hopefully see what I'm doing when I get into the soldering. Let's just pull this in a bit and see if you can see what's happening and I'll get my seat in a better position. So um, as usual, the solder that I'm going to be using is the lead tin solder 6040 mix. I prefer uh, leaded solder. Um, it gives you better joints than this lead-free stuff. The whole European legislation off of taking lead out of solder is a bit of nonsense in my opinion. So, uh, still coming up to temperature. I'll just clean off the tip of my bolt and tin it. Yeah, we're getting there. So I'm just going to stick my extractor fan on. You'll hear it. That's just to wisp away the, um, the fumes. So let's just clean my tip. A little bit of solder on my tip. And I'm just going to do a one leg to start with. Okay, one leg on each. Can I get that in there? There's another one. Hopefully that's on camera and you can see what I'm doing there. So I'm uh, touching the pad and the leg at the same time. And then feed the solder in. So hopefully that's coming up on camera. Oh. And of course this uh, solder has its own flux. So I've done one on each leg. And what I'm going to do now is just make sure that the resistors are still flush with the board, which they seem to be. And I shall uh, do the other legs. So I'm just going to snip those off just now. There's one. Now they want you to cut these as flush to the board as possible. Because I think there's a height um, issue when you're jamming this into the case. So do cut them off flush. Um, I've actually soldered both of the tails on that one. Right, so I have 
three more legs to do. That one's already done. So let's get those done. Oh, our resistor has fallen out. Ah, I thought there was one more to do. R5 fell out. Naughty R5. Right. That's because I did the two legs of one. I didn't do one leg on that one. So let's just get this one done. Just get zoomed in on there again. So you can see what I'm doing. Right, so I forgot to do that one. Let's just get a bit tinned up on the ball. There we go. Again, I'll just check that that's sitting flush, which it is. Lovely jubbly. Just take the leg off of that one that I've soldered. Right, and get the other three legs done. So this will be a relatively quick job, apart from the little modification that I'm doing. Um, there we go, that's that one on. Oh. And that, is it that one? Where am I looking for? Oh, there it is, up there. There you go. So that is the resistors soldered. Nice and easy. So let's remove the legs off of these. Um, no, still got one to do. Terry, you're rubbish. Yes, I know. Still got one to solder. I'll just get that done. Uh, where is it? It's a red colour, it makes it quite hard to see, actually. Right, that's that in. So there we have our resistors done. Chop the legs off flush. Yes, they're all nice and flush. Right, so that's the four resistors. So what's the next highest thing on the board? Ah, uh, hmm... Right, these capacitors, so capacitor number 8 is, should have a 101 written on it so uh, these are not polarity sensitive at all so that's 101 <coughs> and just double check on my sheet, capacitor 8 C8 101, so C8 is the one at the top, so perfect size, it just drops in there um, to save that moving I'm going to just tweak the legs slightly apart and I shall solder one leg like this so there we go and then I shall Check the board to make sure it's sitting nice and level. And it needs a little bit of a, a push in. So I'll just reapply heat um, to the pad and give that a little a little wiggle like that. That's not bad. Then I can solder the other one. There we go. So that's that one done. Nice and easy, easy peasy. So we'll just snip the legs off of that one. Right, next one is capacitor number seven. Capacitor number seven is 222. So I'm looking for one with 222 on it. Again, really, really small. 222. And that's the next one down. That's capacitor number seven. Again, I'll just tweak the legs a little bit to the side to hopefully hold it whilst I get the first leg soldered. C8 
see if you can see what I'm actually doing there. So I shall solder this leg first. There we go. And oops, sorry, my nose is running away here still, so that's kind of level. That's all right, that'll do for me. So I shall now solder the other leg. There we go, that's that solder down. Cut the legs off. So the next capacitor we want to do is C6. C6 is 473. So there we go. 473, have we got 473? Can we get it to focus? There we go, 473, through the hole, and we'll just give the legs a wee bend, so that it stays in place. Again, I'll just do one leg first. Tin my bolt onto the pad and the leg, in with the solder. Check it's all nice and flush. It's a little bit up this one, so I will adjust it by just reapplying heat and giving it a wee, wee wiggle. There we go. Get the other leg done. There we go. Uh -huh. Have I got enough on that one? There we go. So that's that one. I'll just snip these off as well. And the next capacitor down is capacitor 5, which is a 105, which I think is this one. Just check, get it to focus. 105. That goes in across there, like so. Again, we shall bend the legs over just a little bit on either side to hold it in place whilst I solder it. And let's get some solder on that joint. Let's check that it's square. Ah, it doesn't look too bad actually, that'll do for me. Let's get the other leg done. So this is a nice little kit, it won't take you long to make up, but apart from the small modification that I'm going to do, uh, because I've read in the feedback that the amplitude uh, potentiometer is kind of back to front to what we're used to. We're used to turning to the left for the minimum and to the right for the maximum, and it appears to be back to front on this one now. I'm just checking that leg might be a little bit long and let's just take that one off. Apparently there's clearance issues as well with uh, the board and they want you to crop them down as far as you can. I can't see that being an issue. Right. Oh, I never cropped back the resistor here, did I? Did I? Yep. Don't think I'm going to get a much closer than that. Um, I've also heard that uh, the way they space the board you can have some problems with it not being close enough so that's them soldered in uh, there is one more capacitor capacitor number 2 uh, which should be a 104 which should be this one 104 again these are not polarity sensitive whatsoever Ooh, that's got a bit of a so that goes in up the top here. That's actually got quite a good grip, but I'll still put a bit of a, a bend on the legs to aid with soldering. I can't even see it now. Where are we? 
while we're up here. So I'll just turn my bolt a little bit. Get on there. Get the heat going. Just check to see if it's level. That's fine, that'll, that'll be lovely. So let's just solder the other leg. Oops. Not quite got on the pad there. Mm, yeah. A little bit too much solder on that one, I'm going to take it off. Especially when we've got clearance issues, I don't want it to be... Oh, you can't see what I'm doing there. I just had a little bit too much solder on there, so I just took a bit, a bit of it off. Let's clip these legs back. Okay, so that's all of those capacitors done. What's the next biggest thing on the board? I would say it's probably um, this IC socket. Now, it's telling you that pin 1, let's see if I can get something to point with. Right, you'll notice the little cut out here. And that is always towards pin 1. I'm just checking on there. Yeah. That's always towards pin one, this cutout, and you'll notice that pin one is also designated by this square pad. So if we also look at um a lot of people don't like using these. I usually use turn pin ones if I'm using sockets, but I might decide to um that these chips uh, you can make up your own little circuits with them. I may decide to make my own slightly better one at a later date. But uh, I have a little tool for this actually. It's not very straight. This is a, an IC straightener. Okay, so I can put it on there and I can just give it a wee, a wee press like that. Oh, yeah. So it's just a, another gadget that I've got uh, for straightening ICs. It's just a, I like my gadgets. So that should drop into the holes a lot better now. Um, that's the theory anyway. So there we go, there's a socket on the board. And just checking all the pins are through. So what I'll do with this one is I shall... I'll just zoom in for you again. I shall do one corner um, first. So, in there, heat the pad up and the pin, like so, and I'll do one corner at this end, on the opposing corner. Come on, just getting the heat, just needs a wee bit more heat to get it in. So I've done two corners and now I want to make sure that this thing is flush. So all I'll do is I will hold this like so whilst heating the pin and giving it a little press. That seems to be in. Sorry, I'm on camera. And the same at the other end. I shall give it a little press in. Um, reapplying heat to the pin, just reflowing it, giving it a press. So that that's sitting nice and square. Or squares I can get it. And then we'll solder the rest of the pins. It should should be nice and easy. So here, here we go. A bit of heat pad pin and get it flowing. Takes a little bit more heat because these are bigger pins, so they've got slightly more thermal mass than the capacitors and stuff. Hopefully that's all on camera. 
So I'm just applying heat to the pad and the pin, then putting the solder in. Same again with this one. Same again with this one. And I'll just give this a wee, a wee touch of flux. Let's get the other side done. Oh, that one looks a little bit shy. Okay, so does that one. Right. Hopefully I'm on camera. Because it's a double-sided board, it tends to wick through. There we go, get up and done. The idea behind this is then we can just click the IC in at the end. The IC is always the last part you put in. And this one. So these little kits are really good for uh, practicing your soldering. And also it gives you a nice little gadget at the end. So there we go, we've got all the pins um, soldered. I don't think they need nip back any. I hope not. Um, but I can nip a bit off them if need be, but I'm going to try and leave the pin length on them. Depends what the clearance is between the board. So there we go, that's that on. Um, the next thing I would go for would be the electrolytic capacitors. So we have a nice big fat one, which is, I believe, is 100, nano, 100 microfarad, nanofarad. Um, 100 microfarad. So with these ones, the long pin is the positive, and the negative is the shorter one, and it also has the corresponding band. Now, on some boards, it will mark it as a plus and a minus, or it will mark the negative as a shaded area. So the shaded area basically lines up with the um, the stripe. So we're going to put this one in, in capacitor number one, which is the biggest one, and it sits lovely all the way in. I might just bend the legs a wee bit. So I'm going to do my usual with this one, can you guess? I'm just going to do one leg first. So I shall tack that leg in and then I shall come up top and see if the capacitor is still sitting flush, which it appears to be. And then I shall solder a second leg. Says he. There we go. That should be all nice and flush. Yep. And that capacitor is soldered on. I've got a bit much solder on that leg, so I'm just going to wick a bit of that away, cleaning my bolt. We don't need big blobs of solder, especially if we're uh, wanting to trim the legs back. So take away the excess and then cut these back flush. So then we've got two more uh, small electrolytics, uh, C4 and C3. Now these are a bit um, smaller. Um, again, you've got the plus and the minus, which is fair enough. But I have heard stories of um, issues with clearance. Obviously, your board is going to, let's just pull this back. Um, your board is going to be sitting in here. And then there might be an issue with height problems. Now, some people say they've had to fold the capacitors back. I'm just thinking that if we... Without stressing the cap too much, if we can get them flush with the board, I'm hoping that we will then have sufficient clearance. But then I think this sits up a bit, um, which may cause clearance issues. So I'm wondering if I should, as some people have suggested, 
actually pop these capacitors over. So bringing them out a bit with the tails, like so, and laying them flat. Okay, so it's still the same polarity, but what we've done is we've bent it over. I think, uh, from what I've read, that's probably the best solution. That way we're not going to foul the top of the case. So I'm bending those legs over, and then I'm going to lay this down like so, and as before, I shall tack one leg first. Um, on the capacitor. like so and then check that it's sitting all nice and flush on the board okay so I've basically bent the pins over so it sits flush and it should sit in between these two potentiometers okay and then I shall solder the other pin Like so. And we'll cut these off. Right, so I've got another one to do. That sits up here. C3. Again, the long leg in like so. And it's the same size, so we're going to get clearance issues. So, hmm. I'm hoping that again I can bend this over a little bit at a time and get it sitting flat on the board like so uh, but not fouling the potentiometer Re some people call them pots some people call them rheostats actually that one needs soldered a bit better that's because I haven't soldered that pin um, some call them pots, some call them rheostats, some call them variable resistors. I actually cut that one without soldering it, that's a bit silly. Right, and let's get into this one and get a... Get some solder on it. Check that it's flush. It's all sitting okay, like so. Get the other one done. in my bolt. Let's get that in there. Lovely. Has that come through on the other side? A bit more on the left. Okay, that seems to be it. They're a wee bit ski whiff on the board, but I want them to avoid the um, the potentiometers. But I also need the clearance for the top. So it doesn't tell you to do that in the instructions. Um, I just happened to read a bit of feedback on this and the height of the electrolytic capacitors. Um, once it's stood off from the bottom board. Um, can cause problems. So to save any problems with that, I've laid mine flat. Right, so component-wise, that's kind of nearly, almost nearly kind of, says he. What I'm going to do now is we have uh, two um, risers to put in. That's the next highest part. So we've got a 10-pin one there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hold that in whilst I flip it over. Like so. And as always, I shall... Let's just zoom you in. I shall do one pin um, first. Let's get some. Now this will take a bit more heat because there's a lot of metal to these. So let's get that pin done first. 
and then see is the thing sitting flush on the board. That doesn't seem too bad there, and yeah, I think that looks okay. So I'll do one in the opposite corner, just to make sure. Again, because because there's a bit of metal in these pins, um, it'll take a bit more to heat up before the solder starts flowing. There we go. Yeah, that looks fine. So let's get the rest of these soldered up. Right, hopefully it's on camera. Turn the bolt a wee bit. Oh, I can't even see the end of the... My old man eyes are kicking in. That appears to have taken. This takes a little bit longer to heat up. Uh, due to the thermal mass of the pin you don't want a cold joint or a dry joint Terry always goes quiet when he's concentrating now I appreciate these videos might be a bit long um, you have the option to fast forward, but uh, it's just if somebody hasn't done anything like this before, um, I think it's always best just to film it, and uh, you guys watching can decide how much you actually want to watch. Um, you might not have done soldering before, this might all be totally new to you, or you may be a seasoned pro and think, I don't really need to see how to solder, but I do know a few of my viewers... Um, are kind of new to soldering and stuff, so uh, my channel is predominantly aimed at uh, model makers. I've got a solder bridge there, get rid of that. And uh, they're interested in how to put lighting into their kit side of things, whereas I'm also interested in uh, what I call the electricery, this side of things. So I'm just having a quick look there that there's no a tiny wee solder ball there. Don't want solder balls running about uh, anywhere if you've been soldering because that's what causes shorts. So let's get that out of there. So I'm just checking all my joints. That looks okay. Again, I don't think any of them are long enough to need chopped back. So that's the first riser in. We have another four pin riser to go up in this corner up here ok I'll put it that way the way the jumpers are going to go let's see if we can get that held in place whilst I get a corner tacked down yeah so I've, I've been soldering for years but my eyes are not as good as they used to be um, I've got old man eyes so, is that, oops, is that square, kind of nearly maybe, yeah, so I will just reflow that pin whilst holding them all in square, and then take my thumb off before it burns me, yeah, that looks good, do the other three pins, really cracking on with this, as I say, it's, it's something that will keep you busy, uh, as you can see, that the amount of time it's taken me, it doesn't really take that long. It's something that'll keep you busy on a, a wet, rainy day um, for a wee hour or so. If you take your take your time with it, I can appreciate a lot of these uh, electronic videos are tending to run in about an hour. Uh, I normally try and keep most of my videos to under half an hour so people don't fall asleep and lose interest, but. This may interest people. As I say, the fast forward button is there if you uh, you don't want to watch it all. Okay. So that's the next part done. So we've got, let's hold it the right way up. We have all the uh, resistors in. We have the uh, ceramic capacitors in. We have the electrolytics in. Uh, although I have bent those over. We've got the socket pin in and the jumpers. 
So what have we got next? Well, the next kind of biggest thing is the power socket. And it just goes in here like there. So I think I shall do one pin first. Again, this um, these have quite big tabs on them, so it might take a little bit to solder them. Uh, but let us just try and get some heat on this and then flow some solder in. Because it's a bigger a bigger tab. Right, and then I'll let that cool down a bit and then make sure this is all flush on the board. It's not sticking up anywhere. Okay, I seem to have got that. And I shall do the other two. I think I shall come round to... Oh, off camera. And I shall come round to this side this time. I'll just put a little bit of solder on there to help with the, the thermal connection. Hold it on for a bit and then start feeding the solder in. So that's that pin done. And one more pin for the power one. So again, let's get this some heat going. A wee bit of solder in to help with the, the thermal connection. Let it heat up a bit and then the solder should just flow into all the joins. There we go. And off. Right, so that is our um, power, sorry, off camera, that's our power connector on, lovely. Uh, the next part, like the largest part, is the, uh, the block connector, which goes in here. The pins are, re there might be a bit of thermal mass on this because of all the metal in here. So again, it might take a little bit to solder, so I'll just stick that down to like so. And I'll do what I did with the power switch. I will try and get it square, tin my bolt, and let the heat sit in it for a little bit. Just put a little bit more solder on there to help with the thermal conductivity. And then when it's hot enough, the solder it should start flowing now. These will have a bit of mass because all that other stuff. I don't think I need quite as much solder as that. But it's certainly got the pin, and it certainly seems to be level. So let's get the the one on the other side. Just turn me bolt. Make sure I'm on camera. A wee bit of solder on to help with it. Now you sometimes find the next joints are a bit easier because there's a bit of heat in there from doing the first couple. Right, and again, a tiny little solder ball on there. Let's just get that away. So we now have the connections in. So all we have now is... Sorry, just blowing my nose again. Just looking at the time. This is probably going to be an hour's video. I'm going to solder in one pot and show you that being done. Okay. Again, a lot of thermal mass on these because there's a metal body on them. I'll show you soldering this one in. Then I'll go off camera and put this one in. And then I'll do the modification required for this one uh, and show you before I solder it in, because then basically we're on to test mode after that. So, uh, yeah, three pins and the two VR ar arms there. So let's see if we can get this to go into position. Should clip, and it does. So what I'm tempted to do here is I will solder the big clip first. And again, I will do one first, check and see if it's level. So I've got some solder on here. Again, this has got quite a lot of thermal mass to it, this one. So keep the heat on it for a bit. Then feed your solder in. And then away. 
Okay, let's see, is that square? They click in quite well, these, so that's pretty cool. Then I'll do the other one, I'll do the same again. I'll get some, a nice amount of solder on the end to get the thermal connection. Heating the pad and the pin at the same time, and then I should be able to feed the solder in like so. And then away, and then I've just got three little connections down the bottom, so I shall do the centre pin first. Because I'm trying to avoid solder bridges. There's that one. And then I shall do the next pin. Okay, and then this pin. And just check that you've no solder bridging out between the three pads and it's nice and clear which it appears to be. Okay, so I'm going to go and um, solder the other one on off camera because I appreciate this video is running on a bit. And I'm going to do the modifications required um, for this other potentiometer. And I'll do that off camera so when I come back I'll show you what the mods are that I've done and how I'm going to apply them. And then it'll just be a matter of sol soldering that in, chip on, um, putting some wires in, applying power to it and, and checking it with an oscilloscope and then it's just making the frame up. So I'll be back in a bit. Hope you're enjoying this. Um, see you in a bit. Bye. Welcome back. Right, when I went off camera, I fitted the other two pots, but I did a little modification out. I'll just zoom in there. Um, I've got an explanation on paper, but basically the center pin is a sweep, and the two outer pins, this one isn't actually connected to anything um, and this one I wanted to change over so I've bridged a wire from there to there let me explain what I've done so this is what a potentiometer looks like so between pins 1 and 3 if it's a 50k so that's pins 1 and 3 if you just connect those two pins the resistance between there and there is 50k if you connect any one pin and the sweep, depending on where you turn adjust the dial, adjusts the resistance up or down. So if it's the sweep is all the way to the right, you'll be at 50k. If it's all the way to the left, you'll be down at I think it was about one or two ohms, I think we had when we tested it. So all I've done is I've cut or uh, bent up pin three and soldered a wire from pin one to the position of pin three. So hopefully what that should do is because I'll find out when I test it, but I was told that um, on the amplitude um, adjustment, if you are all the way to the... Normally, we would, if we were turning the amplitude up, we would turn it to the right. Now, what I've been told in the feedback, and I hope it's right, is that um, you actually turn it to the left for it to go up, which is counterintuitive, which is why I've basically swapped that wire across. So uh, I've touched up a few of the joints, I've checked them all, obviously that pin's vacant because it doesn't go anywhere. So I haven't got that connected and all I've done is uh, insulated it with a little piece of heat shrink. And I've got a bit of heat shrink going across the front there. So we have to insert the IC, which is this baby. Now I've got this little tool again that I'll just put... My chip in there, give it a little squeeze together a couple of times. Okay, that should straighten any bent pins. Now you will notice, where's my pointy thing? That there is a cutout in one end. Okay, hopefully you'll see that. There's a cutout at that end. And the dot is pin one. And we want that to go to match this where the cutout is and this will be pin one. So what we should be able to do now is place the pin, place the chip into the socket and push it home. There we go. Now, uh, another thing to note, uh, obviously this just has to go into the acrylic case now. Um, they give you little screws as hold offs. The screws are far too short. So basically, your board just kind of sits in it, which is a bit rubbish, 
but once everything's all clipped together, it's actually not too bad. So let's get the... Now, I peeled all the cardboard off the acrylic parts. Um, all I needed was a sharp thumbnail. So that was pretty straightforward. I didn't think I would need to... Excuse me, reaching across to show you doing that. Um, so that one goes in there like here. And then we have the top piece. Again, get your thumbnail across it all to get all the... Uh, little bits off and we shall put the top on try and get it to locate with all the sides and everything sometimes easier said than done it can be a bit of a, a faff and a fiddle well, let's see if we can get this all clipped together so it's clipped together at that end but not at there we go that's it all clipped together now you'll see why I flattened those capacitors because those would have touched the top of the case and we have clearance at the bottom because they're using the nuts and bolts as standoffs. Um, unfortunately enough, once we get it all screwed in, it's not going to move about too much, so I shall just get this screwed together and I pre-threaded the holes so it should um, go together easy enough as long as I've got all the slots in the right bit so it's a nice simple build uh, as I say it doesn't tell you in the kit to fold over the capacitors um, it's just I read a review of it and the people were saying yeah um, you'll not be able to get the top on if you put the capacitors the way they want you to put them and again, the mod I've done on the potentiometer, I'm hoping that their, their feedback is correct, but uh, there was quite a few people says yes, that the, the actual amplitude um, adjustment was reversed. So the easy way to do that is just reverse the two outer pins because the centre one doesn't make any difference. It's just a sweep. And it just depends which end of the sweep they are sampling. So let's see if we can get this all screwed together. And then give it a little test. Again, apologies for the length of the video. But um, as I say, that's what the fast forward button's for. And a total A to, a to Z of my build um, may help somebody that's never built something like this before and wants to wants to attempt it so that's all going in nicely oh, I've got a bit of a curve on there um, why have I got a bit of a curve on there have I have over tightened that really haven't I let's take that back a bit I've went a bit too far with my tightening just didn't want it Rattling, it's rattling at one corner lot. Or is it the board? No, the board's pretty well in. Let's give this corner a wee a wee dicht. It's a good Scottish word. Yeah, a little bit. To get it to go in, you've kind of got to warp it slightly, which is a bit... I'm just trying to see why it's not staying down in the middle as it's sitting on the chip no it doesn't seem to be I've just over tightened it at that corner I think ah, that's a corner that's rattling right so I can back this one off a bit to take the bow off it I went too far with the screw you rubbish Terry Okay, no rattling now. So there we go, lovely jubbly. So we've got the three little knobs. So I'm going to turn it all the way to the left. There's not really anywhere to line it up with, so let's just go for the bottom corner of the pot. Has that been bottom left? Turn them all the way to the left. Again, angle it towards the corner of the pot 
so that they're all kind of similar. No, that's not the same as the other one. Will it come off? So they're all kind of pointing the same way. Yeah, they're not quite right, are they? That first one's not quite in the bit further round. Yep. Let's give it a bit more that way. Right. So that's that. And then all we have left should be these little jumpers. Now, what I don't know yet, I know for the frequency, if we want to set up uh, a 1 megahertz signal, it's up the top. 1 to 10k down the bottom, not to 100 the next one. Right, we'll set it down at the lower end. Now, I've heard that when you set it up at the higher end, it clips a bit and is a bit rubbish. Right, so we've got triangle and sine wave. I'll put that on sine wave. Now, we've got a ground connection. A square wave connection and the sine and the triangle wave or saw wave uh, connection. I don't know if it matters whether this is in or not to um, initiate the square wave one. Um, but right, so I've made some little wires up. I've also wired up a little speaker because um, these signal generators are actually tone generators as well. Uh, obviously, if you're creating a waveform, you are creating... Uh, a sound so let's see what do we need there is it a little plain one that kind of grips it oh there is a bit of a phillips in it let's see if this will that fits it so i don't like the connectors on them they're these um clamp type connectors So I shall connect the ground in, which I already have the little speaker sitting on for an experiment. Come on. Is this too long? No, nope, that's it in now. Let's clamp it down. Has it got a grip? It has. Right, I'm going to leave this one out for the moment because um, I want to check out the oscilloscope first. So I've got another wheel lead and I've got it set up for sine wave. So let's unscrew this one. Shove it in. Okay, so everything is on its minimum. I'm leaving this out just now because I don't want to particularly test uh, do it wrong um, to start off with so I have got my little right, I'll get my camera in a better position so let's back the camera up and have a little look at the bench so here we go this is what it's all about so I'm going to connect my ground to the ground on there. I'm going to connect my probe onto the output there. Now I just need to power both of these up. So I have made a little nine volt dual connector up. So I'll put one in my DSO shell, which the video is up on the channel for. And I shall put the other one in my, hopefully there's enough voltage to drive both, um, my sine wave generator. So that's powered up. So let's power up my, my little meter. See what we get. See if it's generating anything at the moment. Right, so let's take that off. That's off. Centralise that. 
Right, let's set it at... Um, right, we're going to set it on AC because it's a wave. So let's centralise that again. Uh, let's voltage per division. Let's set it up on... 5, 4... No, let's take it down about 2 volts. Let's put on 1 volt AC. Uh, let's do the time frame. Right, 50 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, it's waiting for a... Right, so let's start off with... Let's give it a bit of signal, see if anything comes in. This might not work. Let's centre it. All right, we're getting a bit of a wave. Um, let's take the course up a bit. Let's take the amplitude up. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I've got on a really low um, frequency, haven't I? Well, we're starting to get something now, but it's... Yeah, it, that's everything on max, and it's a bit... Right, let's change it for one volt down to... 5 volt, 2 volt, 1 volt, half a volt. Right, half a volt, centre it. It's not much of a waveform really, is it? It's, yeah, it's a bit... Um, uh, how, how are we doing? Put it on to 1 volt. So this is our supposed sine wave on the lowest of 10. Hertz, let's put it on, oh there we go, that's a bit better, 10 to 100, so that's a, let's see what we're, um, press and hold this down, so frequency is at 200 hertz, okay, let's turn the amplitude down, see if that works, One volt, half a volt. Is it triggering? That seems to have crashed. Right, let's just fire this up again. This again is a bit of a toy. See what we're getting. All right, let's centralize it. It's, I wouldn't say that's a sine wave, it's a, uh, right, so that's at 23, so just at 18 hertz, 24, 24, you can see it changing a bit, yeah, I wouldn't say that's really a sine wave, it's more of a triangle wave that, it's a bit, a bit rubbish. Change the amplitude. Can we take the amplitude up a bit? We can, but we need to take that up to one volt. Right, that's a bit rubbish. Let's try it at the higher frequency of 100 to 2 kilohertz. Let's see what comes in here. Voltage per division. Centralise it. Right. Hmm, it's a bit... It's a bit all over the place, isn't it? Let's take the... frequency down a bit. Yeah, it's a bit... It is generating a signal, but it's not all that exciting. 200... That's not too bad. Still not much a sine wave. Let's try the one up from it. At a higher frequency of 
2 to 6.5, so that's sitting at 1.81. Yeah, we're getting a lot of clipping and stuff. It's at the higher frequencies, it's all a bit. Yeah. It's definitely clipping. It's a bit rubbish. Uh, what about at the highest frequency? Yeah, we're not going to get... As soon as you turn it, turn it up in the slightest, it's all clipping. What we should be seeing is a single wave. So it's kind of all right for in the middle. But I would say that's more of a... Let's take it down again. Two volts, one volt, half a volt. Yeah, that's it's not the best of waves. Right, let's try the triangle wave, see what it does when we go into that. That's pretty much the same, same business, isn't it? Lots of clipping and yeah... It's all right. It's kind of, kind of does the job. Turn out what you're doing right. So there's your triangle wave. It does work. Let's do that. That's supposed to be a sine wave. Yeah, again, that's... It's a bit... It's a bit rubbish. Well, there's... That's uh, kind of a sine wave. Two nine three, so that's a bit rubbish. So let's actually take it out of there and try the square. Well, try the square wave one. Now I believe the square wave one is a fixed amplitude. It is. It's fixed at about. You can't adjust. Um, let's centralise that you can't adjust you can adjust what they call a mark space ratio or a duty cycle the frequency is yeah alright you get the frequency a wee bit I was basically adjusting the Yeah, you you can't adjust the uh, amplitude on it, so the square wave is fixed. Let's put it on a different. There you go. There's a square wave. Take this off. Okay, so there's your square wave, which isn't all that great, and you can kind of play about with it a bit, but it's yeah, it's not that great. So. That's boring. So let's take that off of there. Keep it on sine wave. Take all the amplitudes down and connect the little speaker and see if we can generate a tone. It may work, it may not. So... Let's just clip onto there and see if we're actually getting any signal. We'll probably need to put it down there. Right, so let's start. Generating a wave. Are we getting any sound through? Nothing through the speaker. Oh well, that was worth a try. Yeah, it's not putting a, a, enough of a signal for it to be... Uh... You can maybe hear it a wee bit. So that's what a 1.686 kilohertz signal sounds like. Do 
yeah, I'd need to amplify that through a little transistor or something like that. But so it does generate tones as well. So what do I think of it? Um, hmm, not a lot actually. Is it a professional little doofer? Nah, it's. There we go. There's a there's a signal it's given there. Let's change the amplitude a bit. One volt. So all we're getting through there. That's like fifty millivolts. Twenty millivolt um, signal. And that's what that sounds like. I don't know if you can hear it. Obviously, that's not amplified. I just thought I would try a speaker for a bit of a laugh. Um, so what, what do I think of it? It's a toy. Um, my little um, workaround, as far as the, um, the amplitude goes, that's worked uh, reversing that wire across. Um, it doesn't produce a very good sine wave unless it's at the lower frequencies. Um, a triangle wave it's all right with but once you get into the higher frequencies um, it clips and basically instead of a single line going up and down it all just kind of merges together and looks a bit rubbish um, and the square wave you can't adjust the amplitude on it's okay, it's a, tenor, it's a tenor kit it does kind of do what it says in the tin so yeah, what, what, what would I give it as a, a signal generator? Uh, 5 out of 10 but it's alright for a kit for 8 quid it's quite a nice wee thing so yeah I hope you enjoyed this um, as always uh, make sure to like if you liked the video or thumbs down if you didn't uh, subscribe click the little bell icon if you want notified of uh, any future videos apologies about the length of this one we're in an hour and a bit again because uh, I like to waffle and uh, as always, if uh, you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon. I'll pop the link up uh, down below. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, donations start for a dollar a month, and it just helps keep the channel going. But um, it was interesting to make. Um, I might try a different one, but yeah, it's a bit of a toy and not a serious uh, signal generator. But yeah, it's yeah, a toy. Definitely a toy, but I like my toys. So, as I say, hope you enjoyed this. Um, and look out for future videos. And speak to you later. Terry from Smooth Watch Up. Bye now.